The 82nd Airborne Division is always on call to be anywhere in the world within 18 hours as the main ground component of America's Global Response Force. Today, the 2nd Brigade Combat Team has been called on an emergency deployment readiness exercise to assess their ability to respond to a crisis. In 18 hours or less, the Brigade will parachute into Wright Army Airfield, Georgia to conduct a joint forcible entry. Yeah, about 16 and a half hours ago at 0400 this morning, they were alerted, and here we are ready to jump tonight. After troopers get the early morning notification there will be a GRF deployment, they quickly report to their units and preparation begins. We all show up here uh, within a few hours, uh, and then we start to plan, start to disseminate information, and uh, really start a bunch of things moving all at once. And it's pretty complicated. Seek out the enemy and destroy him. Number one, that's how we provide for the security. While leadership throughout the Brigade, Division, and Joint Operations Center plan the mission, the paratroopers that will be on the ground are issued supplies and ammunition by the Outload Support Battalion. They're on a one-hour recall. Uh, so that they can be in, ready to go, and they, they man uh, nodes around the Fort Bragg installation uh, at the unit area for Team Move, at the Heavy Drop Rig site, here at the uh, individual uh, issue of ammunition, uh, equipment supply issue point. Well, each soldier should actually get two bags of three MREs. And, you know, the challenge that, that these guys have is how do, how do they kind of create order out of chaos? And so. You know, good rehearsals, uh, good preparation. There's an NCO from our formation that takes charge of them and they take them through each one of the stations so that they can, they can get their equipment and then they can re-rig their equipment. Troopers also use any free moments to go over squad level tactics they will employ to clear the drop zone. What we're practicing here is clearance of a flight landing strip, uh, which is one of our main missions as engineer assets in an airborne operation. While Fort Bragg elements prepare for the mission ahead, other joint GRF mission enablers get the call. This is a team effort. First, we, we couldn't do it without our Air Force partners. Secondly, the, the Global Response Force that's going in tonight will also be enabled by 10th Mountain Division, you know, flying rotary wing helicopters down from Fort Drum, and also from 3rd Infantry Division, which will bring in you know, both Bradley's fighting vehicles and tanks. It's a long day, but at 17 hours after the initial notification, 2BCT is airborne on the way to jump, fight, and win. The night hasn't even started yet. I'm confident that we can make our load time, we can get wheels up. Uh, my immediate concern is safely getting our paratroopers on the ground, getting combat power assembled, and uh, getting after the enemy on the drop zone. And then we already have some planned follow-on missions, and it's going to require us to very quickly transition from our airborne assault mission set to those follow-on missions and doing some field planning and get ready for that. With the airfield seizure complete, the focus quickly turns to conducting a non-combatant evacuation operation, a two-gun raid, howitzer live fire, and high-value target operations that seek to capture hostile leadership. Alpha 6 Romeo, Alpha 5, the AM sets are at my location. Time now, over. So this is why you joined the 82nd Airborne Division. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a unique experience. It's gonna be one of these things that paratroopers remember for years uh, that they did this on this night. Uh, of course, when they remember it years from now, it's going to be 20 degrees colder and the winds will be 20 knots higher and all those things. But that, that's, that's what makes paratroopers paratroopers.